I'm going to introduce you to the transvenous pacer and the process of uh, your responsibilities for helping um, put the transvenous pacer in place. The reason that you would put the transvenous pacer in would be uh, the patient may have symptomatic bradycardia, symptomatic meaning they are hypertensive, they have chest pain, they are decreased LOC, or they may have second or third degree heart block. And, and you need this transvenous pacing electro tray. Okay, um, so that's one of the things you need. This is called an introducer. <clears throat> and down by where the triple lumens are, this is, sits adjacent to the triple lumens, and um, it's just a way the doctor puts in this like a central. Um, and then the third thing that you would need is the pacemaker generator, which comes in this little uh, box. The first thing the doctor does is uh, decides to put in the, uh, the pacemaker, and so he might put in the introducer, and then what he's going to do, and this is just a replication of the pace, pacemaker tray, and um, he is going to um, thread this pacemaker wire um, into the patient, and it's going to go probably through the subclavian, superior vena cava, right atrium, tricuspid valve, and right ventricle. It sits in the right ventricle. The doctor gets this put in, and he's going to say, Okay, where is the pacemaker generator and the bridging cable? And uh, because, um, and that's in here. Uh, this is the bridging cable that you want. There are two other types of bridging cables, but you do not want those types of bridging cables. You want this uh, particular bridging cable. And um, so you're going to drop that uh, into the sterile field. And the doctor is going to um, uh, plug it into the pacemaker wires, you know. So he's going to put a negative on one side and a positive on the other side. And, um, and then he is going to hand you this bridging cable, okay? So he hands it to you and you take it um, so that you don't, aren't touching him and keep the area sterile and then it gets plugged in to uh, the V here. Okay? Um, v for ventricle, A for atrium, but you're going to plug it into the V. Okay? So then you can turn this uh, pacer on. And um, there are a few defaults that this pacemaker has. It, um, it has a rate of 80 that it defaults to. And so you could say the doctor says, oh, I want the rate at 75. So you can turn it, um, let's see, counterclockwise and uh, turn down the rate. Um, and so I don't think it'll go to 75. It, it goes to either 74 or 76. So we'll give him 76, okay? So um, this is the rate it's going to pace at, okay? Then the next uh, line is the atrial output. And I'm going to, you know, we're going to say this person's life. This is not going to sit in the atrium, it's going to sit in the ventricle, so we don't really care about the atrium. So we're, I'm going to shut it off. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and shut it off, okay? Then the third parameter is, um, is the uh, ventricular output. This comes in milliamps, milliamps, okay? And so the cardiologist is going to tell you I want, and it defaults to 10, but he probably is going to have you turn it, uh, turn it down. So I'm going to turn it down to, um, to zero, and then I'm going to slowly, slowly, slowly turn it up um, until we get capture. 
And the way, mm, what it looks like when you get capture is that there is a, a pacer spike before each QRS. And it's going to be a widened QRS because it's sitting in the ventricle. Okay, So a pacer spike before each QRS means that you have capture. Okay, And, and um, so once you have capture, then you're going to double that number. So say we have capture at 2, and I'm going to double the number to 4. Okay. The last thing that I want to talk about is changing the battery. Okay. So um, if you push here, there's a little button right here. If you push that button, there is a 9-volt battery and you can uh, put it in either way, this way or this way, and it stays on while you're uh, putting the battery in and uh, so that uh, you'll have a chance to change the battery, okay? So it has an internal battery, uh, but it doesn't last very long, okay? So, and then in order to shut this off, I'm gonna push off twice. Now a couple more things to talk, think about are, is the documentation part. Your, um, and, and Nicole Hook was gracious enough to give this. This is actually, these two pages are um, laminated front to back in with the pacemaker kit. And it kind of tells you all the things that you need to think about, okay? Um, one is the documentation. You're going to set the current pacing settings, um, the stimulation thresholds, or when you got capture. Um, you're going to want to chart their blood pressure, their heart rate, their LOC, their underlying rhythm, the percentage of time the patient is being paced, and any complications. The one thing I forgot to say is that. Um, after a certain length of time, this, uh, the settings get locked. You can unlock the settings by pushing this little key here. But if you want to change the settings, it'll show you that it's locked. And that's the way to unlock it. Okay, So make sure it's locked when you get the settings the way you want it. You need to keep the, this pulse generator away from the patient so they don't um, change anything. And then you're supposed to check the settings every shift and as needed and document. Wear gloves when handling the wires and uh, to prevent any microshock uh, to the patient. And the normal saline needs to run TKO through the introducer port to prevent it from 